It's Mumbai playing Bangalore tomorrow in Abu Dhabi. It's uh, Virat Kohli versus question mark Rohit Sharma. Is there going to be some Rohit Sharma? Saw on social media last night that uh, he did go to the Nets yesterday. Joy, I want to see him back. It's not just for Mumbai. I just want to see him back because I just such a fan. Absolutely. And, you know, last two years back, we had this thing that please let Rohit open. So, at least now they allow him to open. Except in the advertising, they still allow him to open the batting nowadays. Uh, <laughs> the, the only problem is that uh, his fitness, it, it really bothers me that somewhere between MI and the Indian uh, selectors, is, I mean, he can't be batting in the nets and not be fit for all three formats. I mean, I thought that, you know, the way they conveyed that was rather ambiguous. I would have loved to see a press conference where they took a few questions and said that, you know what, Rohit's a part of it, it's not. They've left everybody in a lot of doubt. They've given the other teams a lot of hope because, you know, Rohit not playing is a huge, huge, yeah. huge problem for Mumbai. But I thought a uh, lot of confusion about that. Frankly, everyone's confused right now. Michael, I think Mr. Gavaskar said it well yesterday that you need a little more transparency when it comes to a marquee champion player like Rohit Sharma. Absolutely. I, I, I've been uh, bewildered with the statements and now, when you, once you release a squad and, and Rohit Sharma's not in it, you've got to make sure you've got all the answers to tell us why, because he is a superstar. Um, you know, not having him in a squad tour to, to Australia is is remarkable when you think that he was hitting balls in the next yesterday. I think you know, the, the cricket in public needs to know the real story behind Rohit Sharma of why. You know, mm -hmm. has he got such a bad injury that, you know, could be a, a long term and he could just sneak through the IPL and, and play on 50%. You know, these kind of answers... Um, questions need to be answered from, from the selectors because uh, we all love watching Rohit Sharma, uh, not just the Indian fans, uh, the cricket in public around the world just love the way that he plays and, and when you see that he's left out of such a big, big tour, uh, there must be an issue uh, and it must be a serious issue for him to have done so. Yeah, well, hopefully we shall find out soon enough or maybe he turns up for Mumbai tomorrow and then uh, the Indian selectors say that he's going to join the tour as well. Yeah, Joy. Yeah, that's exactly that. They've left this sort of tantalizing window of opportunity yeah. saying that he could be picked later because we're going to pick him later but you're not sure we'll assess his fitness later and then we'll do it. So, it's just, it's way too ambiguous and if you have to do it then then you say that, okay, don't pick it for all three tours, pick it for one tour, say that he's not available definitely for the ODIs or the T20s, whatever is being played first, and say that he may be fit after that. I think you cannot do this, say that he's not there at part of any of the teams and then suddenly say, no, no, if he proves himself fit, he's going to be a part of it. Normally, yeah. it's the other way around, that you pick a guy and yeah. if he can't prove his fitness, you make a replacement. This is the yeah. first time I've seen the rule being played the other way around. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Particularly with superstars and, and high-level performers, you, you just pick them. You pick them yeah. in your squad and if in three or four weeks' time there's an issue, then you pull him out. But you just put him in the squad. Um, all teams around the world that have these kind of star quality players, that's exactly right, Joe. You always go down the model of picking them first and if in a few weeks' time you have to pull them out, well, you do so. You don't do it the reverse, which is uh, exactly what the Indian selectors have done. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's a little strange and me no likey. Me no likey, I tell you that. Mumbai is not gonna. Mumbai also went me no likey when they couldn't defend uh, 195 the other day, but still, perhaps not gonna make any changes. Perhaps not. They do not like making any changes. Change is not a constant when it comes to Mumbai. And to be honest with you, there's not much to change. I mean, they, they, I mean, I saw the Mumbai last, last time they were hit by the Stokes bus, and it happens every once in a while couple of exceptional players will hit an innings. I mean, Michael will tell you that was an exceptional inning. So, Mumbai can at least take much more out of their loss and say that, you know, one of these days happens, somebody is going to just whack you. Yeah. But, you know, they played well yeah, as opposed to Delhi today. The very different ways in which they lost, you know. Any changes you see, Michael, perhaps for Mumbai tomorrow or they won't? No, because they, they generally don't. I mean, we, we speak about them so often that they're just mystical consistent they they, they they get an 11 and, and they stick with it they give the players the belief that they're going to be playing their roles they, they now and again change the batting lineup but not not too much um here in Pollard will be very similar to Rohit Sharma the captain of the Mumbai team they'll just go with the same 11 I would think um Abu Dhabi will not not mind playing there because they know that you can win either way you know Rajasthan chase down, so it, it doesn't really make much of a difference which way you go about your business. It's about arriving and playing a good brand of cricket. Um, looking forward to it. I always think this is the big, big contest in the IPL. 
yeah. when uh, Bangalore play against the Mumbai Indians. I, I, I prefer Virat against Rohit. Not going to get the full kind of cake, if you like, but uh, I, I do see this as the big play. You know, it's the one kind of uh, game that uh, I get very excited about because I feel it's the real two powerhouses uh, locking horns. You never know. Maybe your wish will come true tomorrow. You never know. <laughs> You never know what emerges from this cloud of ambiguity. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at uh, the Bangalore squad. And there was a lot of clouds of ambiguity over their 11 in the first half of the tournament. Not any more joy, not any more. Yeah, I mean, they've just made that one switch, which is Udana for uh, Mohin Ali. And I think it's sensible. The pitches are slowing down. They already had a couple of fast bowlers out there. They want to play the extra spinner. I can quite understand that. This Bangalore team is as balanced a team as you'll find. And I think they've found their sweet spot out there. They're going to try and stick to it. Uh, it's going to be difficult to beat Bombay because Bombay is also more used to Abu Dhabi as a surface. They've played a lot more matches there. Only Kolkata and Bombay have played consistently in Abu Dhabi. So, they know that ground well. Yeah. And uh, I'd really like to see it. Look, remember the guy who wins this is the first team to reach eight wins. You know. Yeah. That's yeah. still not fully secure, but that's a statement. I think eight, 99.9 times out of 100 will get you through. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it should. And in fact, uh, this year may just even be enough to guarantee one or two. But I keep telling you, I've been saying this on the show, just when you think it's done and dusted, something will happen. Somebody will come and tumble that apple cart and will teach you not to presume. <laughs> because what does it say? To assume is to make an ass of you and me. So, you cannot assume anything till the last game uh, is played. Uh, though, one thing, Michael, if you look at you look at uh, the Bangalore squad, we were talking about bio bubbles earlier, and you look at this Bangalore squad, uh, they've obviously become really tight because Virat's taking all his bowlers to Australia. Look at that! <laughs> They're all going! <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I've been really impressed with uh, Washington Sunder. I think he's, uh, he's having a great IPL. He, he bowls a lot in the power play, skillful, very clever. Uh, it bowls well to right and left-handers. Uh, I think Chris Morris has been a good addition once he came back from his injury. You know, he offers them that little bit of pace. Jahal is, is, is magnificent. And as Joey said, you're down in the left arm. It, they, they've got pretty much uh, the balanced attack. At the beginning of the tournament, I was looking at their attack going, you know, typical Bangalore, so top heavy, heavy with the bat. I don't think they've quite got the ball in to win it. Well, in the last few games, I think they've found some really good combinations uh, with the ball in hand. And when you've got the Villiers, Virat Kohli, Aaron Finch and Co, you know, anything's possible but with the bat. And you just can't rule them out now. I mean, from, from a position of the first few games watching, thinking, oh, it's similar kind of stories to the last few years, they, re they have a realistic chance this year. This is the chance that I guess many of those uh, Bangalore fans have been wanting for the last five or six years, where they've arrived at the start of the tournament with a great deal of hope. And within a few games, they've gone, here we go again. We had the here we go again after about four games this time. but. They've found that kind of combination. Virat's found his mojo. A.B. de Villiers has played some of the, the best innings of the IPL for me. And then they've got these bowling combinations that could work. So 